India's first openly gay prince fights to ban conversion therapy. India's first openly gay prince has vowed to fight conversion therapy. After surviving the horrors of conversion therapy, Prince Mavendra Singh Gohil said he would work on making conversion therapy illegal in India. Gohil announced through a local newspaper that he was gay in 20, 2006. Speaking recently to Insider, Gohil recounted the events that led to and followed his coming out more than a decade ago. His effigies were burnt and his protests erupted. Quote, people took the streets and shouted slogans saying that I brought shame and humiliation to the royal family and the culture of India, he said. His parents disowned him and went so far as to publish newspaper advertisements announcing his status as heir was revoked due to, quote, activities unsuitable to society. Today, Gohil leads the fight for India's liberation against conversion therapy. He is also leading the battle against, quote, decades of regressive mentality, ignorance, and judgment. After homosexuality was decriminalized in India in 2018, Gokhil opened his 15-acre palace grounds and created a center that offers assistance and refuge to members of the LGBTQ community. This is so based. I love based. this guy. Based news from India. This is amazing. Look at this. This cannot be any more wholesome. Okay. Wait, he turned his palace into a shelter for LGBT people. <laughs> oh my God. That is so beautiful. Oh my God. Wait, that I don't even know what to say. This is just so wholesome. Yeah, See, no, this we, is have, a... we have good news from India. See, guys, like people think like we have all, always bad news from India. This is such a wholesome news from India. That's yeah. so beautiful. <laughs> like, um, he has a, he has a really really interesting story. Um, he's almost sixty years old now, um, and he talked about how he knew that he was gay when he was twelve, but when he was he didn't come out until he was like 41 years old. He previously had a marriage to a woman that was like completely failed. Like they never even consummated the marriage. And he said that, you know, when I got married, I thought that things would go like quote unquote to normal. And then I could just like live my life, but things didn't go back to normal. And I realized instead of there just being one miserable person, now I am making two people miserable, you know, myself and this woman who I married. And, um, when he did eventually come out, you know, he was forced to go through conversion therapies. His family almost tried to get him to like get a lobotomy. Basically he had to go through like electric shock therapy, lots of, you know, ritual purifications and all sorts of stuff. And in this interview, he had this really interesting passage where he talked about how um, he lived in such a, a tight society, like a tight culture. He's like the, people in the villages near my area, they literally like worship the royal family. Like I lived in a highly controlled environment where I'm not even allowed around people who are lower caste than me. And it wasn't until in the early 2000s, he started to speak to people and journalists who allowed him to see a more liberal worldview and to accept himself. And when he came out, like I said, there are people burning effigies of him. He got tons of death threats saying, you know, he's a disgrace and all this stuff. And um, so he's getting, you know, just real derision at home. But then he goes abroad and he's on the Oprah show and people are, you know, celebrating him. And um, he has a just really interesting story talking about like that contention and experiencing it and um, how just because sexuality with homosexuality was decriminalized in india like he emphasizes that the fight isn't over like we still need to fight for gay marriage we need to fight for equal rights we need to fight for inheritance rights and he said that primary amongst his goals is obviously to ban this practice that caused him personally so much harm in his life um yeah so i just thought this was like really good news that i wanted to share um, okay. Before I show the picture, because the picture is very based, the, the one that you found. But um, a couple of people have the same question that I had. So Puya saying, I didn't even know India had a king. And Kiko is saying, I didn't know India has monarchy. Like, yeah, how is he a prince? Who's the king? Are, are there okay, more, so are there... 
Um, there is no singular king of India because India before the British was all of these little king little kingdoms that the British then united as a continent. So like in a way, the British are responsible for the Indian as a nation state that we see today. Um, and then it was only, I mean, when the British left, it was very fragile in maintaining India as a nation state. We almost had all these little breakaway kingdoms again. So he is from a royal family um, in Gujarat. I don't know if I said it right this time. Um, you said it better than before, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, and um, then the they used to the government used to have a relationship in some capacity like they i think maybe got like a stipend or some sort of tax breaks or something i don't know but in the around the 70s around the 70s is when the government's legal relationship with all these royal families changed um and they lost a lot of their privileges in the same way um but he's still from a royal family right even though it's um, not recognized in the same way that he used to be Okay, read this comment before I get the picture. <laughs> Katie is saying the only issue is that his palace is in Gujarat. If only it wasn't in a BJP stronghold. Well, in a way, I... that's kind of the perfect place for it. That's probably where a lot of people need it the most. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think like, yeah, that's exactly right. You need it at the heart of where you have the most amount of problems. So, yeah. Also, I'd be saying it's basically a princely princely states so that's yeah. i think how it works okay all right so let me get the picture that you sent me this is pretty base look at that oh look at that yes. so epic oh my gosh <laughs> you okay the of, go i love this photo so much i when i was doing research today i found this photo and i wanted to show everyone and um i actually had an emotional reaction when i looked at this photo um I don't know how to explain it. Like this is one of the most, there's so many little things about this photo that I find beautiful and quite significant. Like you see this man and he's standing in clearly like the Indian countryside and he's holding a flag and it's an LGBT flag, but the flagpole is a tree branch. And you see, you know, he has, I think it's like a woman's shawl around his shoulders. He has more feminine pearls around his neck, but then still the fine regalia of, of a prince. And um, I was just thinking like, look at the dignity of this man. Like it, it made me think about how in Uttar Pradesh recently, we were talking about how the court rejected recognizing a lesbian couple's marriage because it's against Hindu culture and it's against Indian culture. And I felt like this, this image was such a contrast from that. Look at this man that clearly has such dignity in who he is, in, in both his sexuality and embracing feminine aspects of himself. Um, and also, you can just tell just by looking at him and all these other images of him over the years that I was examining, like how much pride he takes in being a representative of his culture, how how rich his understanding and practice of his cultural heritage is. And for someone to say like, you are less Indian because of that, you are less Hindu because of that is, is it's crazy to me, I don't understand it. And to look at the pride and dignity with this man, which with this man holds himself, despite the things that people would say about him, the way he was disowned, the way he was um, denigrated, you know, um, it's, it's so beautiful. Like to me, I, I love this image. This is the image of um, like LGBT royalty, like literally. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just think it's stunning. That was so beautifully said. I don't, that was so, yeah. I, that's so, you know, that, thank you for that, Susie. Um, oh. <laughs> so let's read this by Katie. Katie is saying, um, 
Ah, uh, so meaning what she was saying earlier about, um, you know, the area that it's in, his palace is in. No, what I mean is that many queer people who might need shelter or might not feel safe enough to go to a BJP dominated state like myself. I would prefer to be in an anti BJP state. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, getting there if you're not already in the area, or even if you are in the area, you might want be compelled to want to leave. Um, but for many people, I hope it's a great resource. <laughs> and Forever Stormy's saying he's 60 years old. He's like the Tom Cruise of India. That guy doesn't age. Technically, I think he's like 58. Wait, he he's is he actually almost 60? He looks like yeah, he's, he's 30. almost 60. He look wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. What is how? Hold on one more second. <laughs> that makes no sense. This is this man is almost 60? Okay, I think that photo was taken a few years ago, but even if you look at recent photos, it's like, how? How, King? <laughs> he looks like he just almost stopped being a teenager. Seriously? Okay. Sure. Whatever. He recently got married, too. He got married in 2013 to his husband. Wait, I thought gay marriage was not a, still, I mean, a thing yet. He, he got married. I'm well. His husband is an American, so presumably he got it recognized uh, over here. Okay. Okay. Cool. Randomly, cool. his husband used to be be a cosmetics clerk at a Macy's in Seattle. That's how he. That's why he I'm looks like, so how young. Do you, how did you meet? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Wait. Wait. Now I understand why he looks so young. It makes sense now. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. How do like how do you how does a prince meet someone working the counter out of Macy's? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Abhabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.